All right, so in this video, I'm gonna solve the equation x to the power of 12 minus one is equal to zero. So to solve this, I'm gonna first rewrite this as x to the power of six to the power of two minus one squared is equal to zero. And the reason I'm doing this is so I can use the property a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So this turns into x to the power of six plus one times x to the power of six minus one is equal to zero. So this gives me two equations. I get x to the power of six plus one equals zero and x to the power of six minus one equals zero. Now I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna rewrite x to the power of six minus one equals zero as x to the power of three to the power of two minus one squared is equal to zero. <clears throat> so I can use this property again and get x to the power of three plus one times x to the power of three minus one is equal to zero. Now, for x to the power of three minus one equals zero, I can, I'm can i gonna rewrite this as x to the power of three minus one to the power of three equals zero, so I can use the property a to the power of three minus b to the power of three is equal to a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. So this turns into a minus b times a squared plus a plus one is equal to zero. Sorry, this turns into x minus one times x squared plus x plus one is equal to zero, which gives me yet another two equations. So now I have x minus one equals zero and x squared plus x plus one equals zero. So for x minus one equals zero, all I have to do is add one on both sides and I get x is equal to one. And for x squared plus x plus one equals zero, I can use the quadratic formula. So by using it, I get x is equal to negative one plus or minus the square root of three i over two. So these are two more solutions. And now we aren't done yet because we also have to solve these. So now I have x to the power of three plus one is equal to zero. And I'm gonna subtract one on both sides. So I get x to the power of three is equal to negative one meaning x is also equal to negative one. So this is another solution. Now for x to the power of six plus one equals zero, I'm gonna again subtract one on both sides. So I get x to the power of six is equal to negative one. And if I take the sixth root, I get x is equal to six root of negative one, which is equal to negative one to the power of one over six. So now, the sixth root of negative one is, say the, we know that I is equal to the square root of negative one, which is equal to negative one to the power of one half. So negative one to the power of one over six is the same thing as negative one to the power of one half minus something. So now one over six, or I should say one half minus one over six is equal to one over three. So one over six plus one over three is equal to one half. We know this, meaning we have negative one to the power of one over six And this plus, or sorry, I should, one over two minus one over three is what we can rewrite one over six as. Now, this is the same thing as one half plus negative one over three. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, 
this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So this is going to equal negative 1 to the power of 1 half times negative 1 to the power of negative 1 over 3. Negative 1 to the power of 1 half is the square root of negative 1, which is equal to i. So we get i times negative 1 to the power of negative 1 over 3, which is the same thing as 1 over negative 1 to the power of 1 over 3, which is equal to negative 1. So I get i times negative 1, which is equal to negative i, which is my final solution. All right, so in this video, I'm going to solve the equation 9 to the power of x plus 9 to the power of x plus 9 to the power of x is equal to 999. So to solve this, I'm going to first start by factoring out 9 to the power of x on my left hand side. So I get 9 to the power of x times 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 999. Now 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. So I get 9 to the power of x times 3 is equal to 999. From here, I'm going to divide both sides by 3. So these two cancel out. And I get 9 to the power of x is equal to 999 divided by 3, which is 333. All right, so from here, I'm going to take the log on both sides. So I get log 9 to the power of x is equal to log 333. And if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, this is equal to b times log a. So log 9 to the power of x, I can move x to the front. So I get x times log 9, which is equal to log 333. From here, I'm going to divide both sides by log 9 because we obviously want to isolate x. So these two cancel out, and I get x is equal to log of 333 over log 9. Now, I can rewrite log of 333 as log of 3 times 111. And I can rewrite log of 9 as log of 3 squared. Now we know that if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can move b to the front. Another property of logarithms is that if I have something in the form log a times b, this is equal to log a plus log b. So I get x is equal to log 3 plus log 111 over 2 times log 3. And this is equal to log of 3 over 2 times log 3 plus log of 111 over 2 times log 3. So now these two cancel out, and I get x is equal to 1 half plus log of 111 over 2 times 3, log 3. So now log of 111 is equal to 2.045. So I get x is equal to 1 half plus 2.045 over 2 times log 3. And log 3 now. is equal to 0 0.301. So I get x is equal to 1 half plus 2.045 over 2 times 0 0.301, which is 0 0.602. So now log of 111, which is 2.05, divided by 0 0.602 is equal to 3.397, which is the same thing as 3.40. So if I add 1 half to this, I get 3.90 as my solution 